Hi, my name is Chris, and today I'm going to talk about the different techniques in corrosion study. These methods are based on the electrical response of concrete reinforcement systems. In my presentation, I will first briefly talk about corrosion, why it happens, the chemistry of corrosion, and the consequences of the reaction. Later on, I will talk about how we can detect corrosion, and in the last section, test methods in corrosion study are briefly presented and discussed. So why do steel bars corrode? In simple words, corrosion can be described as a process, or chemical reaction, where refined metals such as steel and iron return to their more stable combined forms as oxides, carbonates, or sulfides. In this chemical reaction, a section of the steel material acts as an anode. This means that the steel loses electrons. On the other hand, another portion of the reinforcing mesh acts as a cathode. In the cathode, oxygen combines with water and the electrons to release hydroxide ions. This shows that the reactions require both water and oxygen to occur. The volume of corrosion products, especially Fe203, is significantly higher than the original steel. This will increase the internal pressure and consequently crack the concrete. We know that the availability of these three elements are essential for corrosion to happen. The reaction requires water and oxygen. However, experiments in real case scenarios show that chloride plays a key role in the onset of corrosion. Concrete provides a high alkalinity environment around the reinforcement. In normal conditions, one can expect this will protect the reinforcing bars from corrosion. At the same time, we know that concrete is a permeable material as moisture and aggressive ions can move through the pore structure of concrete. The interesting question that arises here is the role of chloride ion in this reaction. This has been the topic of research for many corrosion specialists around the world, yet there is no definite answer to it. A very basic explanation is that the ingress of chloride destroys the protective oxide layer on the surface of rebar. This eventually destabilizes the protective film over the reinforcement which eventually leads to the initiation of corrosion. As I mentioned earlier in this presentation, the porosity of concrete makes it possible for ions to penetrate into concrete and make the concrete itself act as an electrolyte. Corrosion happens in this environment, and the movement of electrons in concrete creates an electrical potential field inside concrete over the surface of rebar. For example, the reactions in the anode where steel loses electrons can create a potential difference of negative 780 millivolts compared to a standard copper sulfate electrode. The cathodic reactions would result in a potential difference of positive 160 millivolts. The traditional way of investigating corrosion is visual inspection. However, when damage is detected in visual inspection, it is already too late. Signs of corrosion are often marked with delamination, which is the result of corrosion materials expanding. Visual inspection is often performed with chain dragging tests to identify the delaminated areas. At this stage, there is not much left to do except repair. Corrosion activity is often quantified by some chemical and or electrochemical technique. These methods can be used to study the kinetics of reactions. Most of the existing corrosion rate measurement techniques are based on studying the electrochemical condition of rebar concrete interface from the surface of concrete. Different techniques have been developed over the years to study different aspects of corrosion. I will introduce two major concepts we normally deal with when it comes to corrosion study. The first concept is the half cell potential. In this method, surface potential measurement is used to predict the probability of corrosion. While the test provides useful information about the chance of corrosion for the area under investigation, the results can easily become misleading if the potential effect of influencing parameters are not appropriately taken into account. Another limitation of the test is that it does not provide any information about the kinetics of corrosion reactions. The second concept is the rate of steel corrosion. The corrosion rate is about the kinetics of reactions and how fast the corrosion is progressing in the concrete. This becomes important in the context of life cycle assessment as it helps engineers better predict the remaining service life of a given structure. So let's talk a little about these concepts and measurement test methods. The half cell test can be used to predict the corrosion potential from the surface of concrete. Several associations have standardized the test procedure 
including ASTM, UNI, and RILUM. In the half-cell potential method, the potential values at the surface of concrete are measured with respect to a reference point. Concrete surface should be prepared before doing the test, that is to remove paint or other non-conductive layers from the surface. The surface should have a minimum amount of moisture. A sound electrical connection should be established between the reference electrode and reinforcement. The value is normally presented in contour plots, showing different half-cell potential values. This helps identify areas with a higher chance of corrosion. For example, ASTMC876 introduces three different ranges for the measurement. Half-cell potential values less than negative 350 millivolts, measured in reference to copper sulfate electrode, represent an area where probability of having active corrosion is more than 90 percent. When measurement is higher than negative 200 millivolts, this probability is less than 10 percent. Results for half-cell potential values between negative 200 millivolts to negative 350 millivolts is uncertain. Half-cell readings are affected by many influencing factors, such as concrete moisture content and the degree of carbonation. One can expect to have more positive values as concrete becomes dry. In contrast, moist concrete can show more negative values. When it comes to half-cell potential values, one should take into account the effect of environmental conditions such as moisture and humidity, as well as the properties of concrete materials, for example, dense concrete versus porous concrete versus carbonated concrete. There are some complications along the way when performing a half-cell measurement. High electrical resistivity of concrete cover, decrease in the moisture content of concrete, as well as an increase in the thickness of the cover, make half-cell readings less accurate. Also, a decrease in oxygen concentration at the surface of the steel reinforcement for concrete in fully saturated conditions will result in a more negative corrosion potential reading. When doing a half-cell potential test, one should remember that the surface should be free of paint and chemical epoxy coatings. Also, the test on stainless steel reinforcement and epoxy coated rebar will increase a chance of error in the measurements. The second group of tests that I'm going to present today are those dealing with the measurement of corrosion rate of steel reinforcement in concrete. These tests provide important information on the kinetics of reactions. Most of these techniques are based on measuring the polarization resistance of a corroding rebar. This is normally achieved by exciting the steel concrete interface by passing a direct current through the system. I will start with the linear polarization resistance measurement, or LPR. In this technique, a three-electrode cell, with or without a guard ring for current confinement, is used. The test relies on the identification of the linear portion of the potential drift versus the current relationship around the open circuit potential of the bar experiencing cathodic polarization. Using the Stern-Geary equation, one can measure the corrosion rate. In this equation, the B is a Stern-Geary constant and can be determined numerically by knowing the anodic and cathodic Tafel coefficients or experimentally by measuring the mass loss. The other important parameter is the polarized area. A number of test procedures have been developed to calculate the polarization resistance. There are two approaches to doing an LPR test. The first is a potential static sweep in which voltage is increased with a constant sweep rate and the response current is recorded. The second is a galvanostatic sweep in which the current is increased with a constant sweep rate and the response potential is recorded. It is generally suggested the sweep should not go beyond plus minus 12 millivolts on both sides of the open circuit potential. Otherwise, the linearity of the relationship cannot be assured. It is worth noting that the polarization resistance measured by this technique includes the concrete resistance. The next technique I'm going to talk about is the galvanostatic pulse technique. The main concept used here is very similar to the LPR. An anodic current pulse is galvanostatically applied to the rebar from the counter electrode placed on the surface of concrete. The magnitude of the applied current is normally in the range of 2 to 400 microampere, and the duration of pulse is less than 30 seconds. This small anodic current changes the potential of rebar in concrete. In fact, the rebar is polarized in the anodic direction starting from the open circuit potential. Access to the rebar is essential for the electrical connection of the instruments that use this technique. 
The potential is measured by a reference electrode located at the center of the probe and the current is applied through a counter electrode placed around the reference electrode. A guard ring is usually used in this type of instrument to confine the current distribution along the rebar. Increase in cover thickness decreases the polarized length because the current signal distributes over a large part of the rebar. Applying a higher polarization current will result in a potential drift of more than 25 millivolts and the relationship between potential and current will move beyond the linear region. The application of both LPR and galvanostatic pulse techniques can be challenging in terms of positioning the measurement probe, especially in a heavily reinforced concrete structure. The other source of uncertainty will be the parameters included in measuring the beta factor. The next technique is the AC impedance method, where an AC current is used to study the electrical response of a corroding bar in concrete. The AC impedance technique is a very powerful tool in corrosion study. A small AC potential is applied to the rebar and the current response is analyzed. Then the impedance of the system is determined. This is done over a wide range of frequencies, which makes it time consuming, especially on the lower end of the frequency spectrum. The response of the system in a higher frequency range is more representative of concrete material while a lower range is a good indicative for rebar concrete interface condition. The difference between the two can yield the polarization resistance. While the method is not efficient for field applications, it can be a very useful tool in laboratory investigation. The connectionless technique is the most recent development to measure the corrosion rate of a corroding rebar in the field. This technique is unique since it does not require any rebar connection which makes it faster and more efficient. In this technique, the low frequency behavior of the reinforced concrete system is determined by applying a narrow current pulse or a step voltage current for a short period of time of about 3 seconds. At the same time, the voltage drift is recorded using a high sampling rate. The lower frequency impedance of the system is then measured and used to predict the state of corrosion. A mathematical model is used to simulate the response of the concrete rebar system. Such a model is then assigned to the test results obtained with the device. Certain parameters such as polarization resistance and corrosion rate are then measured by extracting parameters from the fitted curve. Thank you for watching this video. For further information about corrosion and corrosion testing, please visit our website at www.geotech.ca.